beautiful day. Yay, yay. It's not beautiful, actually, it's quite miserable. Look at it. We have no sunshine today. No sunshine. Chains, big chains, big long chains. Not really sure what they're for, actually. I just been told to take them with me. Actually, I don't know what they're for, but I think it's a bit of overkill. But hey ho, no my decision. We're loading this, and it's going to. Where's it going? Do you know where it's going? Because I can't remember. Um, Went to Lactress Hunt and then we gotta go and pick up uh, a couple of containers which are going to Swansea again. Again. Now, I had that on all day yesterday. My half price tipper because apparently we couldn't afford a proper one. <laughs> right, we're gonna get this on. Concentrate, concentrate. One, one day with a tipper on, let's state the net. Ah, come in, man. Good. What's clean the other day? Remember Monday? Shiny wheel Monday? Not shiny no more. Oh. <laughs> well, that one down. So, we also need a ladder. I get asked all the time for a ladder. Best we find a ladder. Found a ladder. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Start my own window cleaning round now, can't I? You know what I mean? Why not cleaning windows? <laughs> So, off goes the machine, toodaloo, and I pick up two 20 foot containers, yes they do fit on my trailer. Um, there's no rush, um, I'm going to be down here till about 10 o'clock, it's only half past 8 now, so I'm going to prep a trailer by you now, save me having to do it when I get down here. We'll have one up on here, one on the back by there. Right, here we go! Do, do. Thing is, a 20 foot container won't, will fit up there, but obviously you're gonna have a lot of overhang. So we're gonna put something across by there now to, uh, for it to sit on. Um, do, 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 do. Look at these technical things we got by here. So we're gonna lose, that's a uh, uh, box. We take off 16 inches. Fifteen. That's twenty. For there. Plus sixteen inches. Two foot, so they'll sit about by there. And the other one will just sit nicely on the back. Build.
so everything is here. Save me climbing up and down the trailer after. So I can just get on the job, pop them straight on. Everyone's a winner. I do with some 10 meter straps going on. I'm gonna have to uh, possibly have to double a few straps up. That is life. Look, John. Well, uh, watch this now. Oh yeah. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, my uh, one of my esteemed colleagues thinks it's big fun to take the Mickey out of me because these straps pulled out. But don't worry, man. They are best. They are the best. Oh, I do love a new strap. Oh. Mm, new strap. <laughs> so, one loop over. Put that back in there. So you have this. Like this, slip this into this, pull it all the way down, and then turn. And keep turning, and keep turning, and keep turning. Fish. Looks better than that, you know. So, everything's here. Um, They'll go on top there to stack it up to get the height for there. I think it's 22 inches, if I remember right, or 23 inches. One container on there, it'll sit by there, and then the other 20 straight in the back. Uh, you could put the container up on there, probably put two straps on the front, it wouldn't go anyway, but it'll just bounce. You've got too much hanging over the side, you've probably got a 50 50 on it. So, right, get out, yeah, all done. Those chains are going to be used to take the cabins on and off. I can eat my uh, tangerine before I get back on the road. Go, Nelly, go! With the speed of a thousand galloping turtles! Um, I forgot to say, what I was going to say. Um, yeah, that's why I like this kind of work. Got to think. Got to think. Can't be dealing with um, straightforward, simple work. It's one of the reasons. I, it's not I don't like the tip of work. It's quite nice to actually do that now and again. Um, you just you get a bit monotonous. As um, if you switch off and do that kind of work. Fill your boots, brilliant. You're basically just pointing it forward and going. Which suits some people down to the ground, unfortunately don't suit me. But it is nice to do have the odd couple of days now and again. I'm, I'm going to get out, get stinking dirty, or I don't know. I'm going to go find buckets for machines on site. So. Anyway, horses for courses. Same as container work, I find container work very. Um, very boring but some of the container jobs I have done before in the past have been quite interesting at the same time because how they put some of the stuff in containers is unreal absolutely unreal thinking about it I actually done a video on it how they put two cars and everything they basically done a house move from the UK I can't remember where it was going we'll have to have a look what video that was was old one, very old. Um, yeah, we can have some really interesting stuff. It's a lot of the time you pick containers that we never know what's in them. We haven't got a clue. Yeah. 
get a cappuccino. We could have a little bit of a waffle, but yeah, no. So, pop a kettle on, get some popcorn, some crisps, have a little, have a little chat, shall we? Yeah, I'd say them before I went off on a tangent. So, I prefer this work. I've got to think a little bit. It's not just plain, plain sailing all the time. My boss actually asked me, oh, can I get my hands on a flat trailer and do this job? The first thing I said to him was, why? That's two containers, and two. Well, they won't fit on our trailer. Yes, they will. They will fit on the trailer. How do I know they fit? Plain and simple. They fit within the length, the height, that's irrelevant. Depending on how low the bridge is. But if you want to make a step or something, then just do that. Or a support, or a strut, whatever it is. When we used to do a lot of the steel stuff, you would be nothing unusual but have to knock a cradle up for something. I always used to, um, when I first started driving, um, uh, however many years ago that was, I think it was about 15 years ago, there'd be nothing, you'd always have an hammer and a bag of nails with you all the time, no matter what. It's just, it's just, just the way it was. So, what oh, was that, Phil? I think it is. Uh, yes. <laughs> But I really gotta stop. I gotta concentrate, people concentrate. Yeah, so you'd, you'd always have stuff with him. So it's nice to have, uh, have to use the old brain a little bit. It's nice to use your little brain. Something annoyed me the other day. I hope you got your cut back. Um, <laughs> what about we got a job? We got two jobs and they're right next door to each other, sort of. And the guy pulled up, he said, oh, I'm after uh, looking for, for Rob Morris. I said, yes. He said, they're on this site. He said, you're at the right site. I don't know, he said. This is where my sat-nav brought me. <coughs> right. I got a problem with people using sat-navs. That's what you want to do. It makes your life easier. By all means, carry on. I said to him, what's the address? I don't know. I've only got a postcode. Why? Did just like it blows my mind. And when I when people phone me, oh, I, I got a postcode for you. I don't want a postcode. I want an address. Yeah, but I give you a postcode. I don't want a postcode. I want an address. So therefore, I can reference the address with the postcode, the town, the street, and so on and so forth. So you can build a little picture up and make sure it's all right. You put a, a number wrong in a postcode, uh, you're going miles out, absolutely miles out. So why would you do it if you look at your whatever it is, your Google, Google or whatever, and wherever that pin has been dropped, I want to see the street name. If it's close to that area, then it's, you know, you reasonably, it is the right area. But people are blind, driving blind with crap navs. I, I can't understand why you do it. And you don't learn where places are. That's the other thing I find. Um, you know, you, you, there's reference points with, to certain places. Uh, Spaghetti Junction's a classic example. Right? Everyone knows what Spaghetti Junction is. So, if I was to say to you, oh, you know, up the M5, head towards Spaghetti Junction, pick up the A38, left-hand lane, you know, so, that's how you remember places. You know, you use your reference points. I can't believe the, the volume of people who bl drive blind. Just, I can never go out on a job with just a reference number. I want a, a full, full postcode of everything I do. Oh, sorry, buddy. My apologies. Yeah, Have an address. Proper address. Not sat there going, uh, turn left. Uh. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I knew the other one was. I'm gonna put my uh, my uh, my pennies worth in on it. Uh, two statements of, uh, of the job, right, in, in a nutshell. One said, 
it's crap, uh, I'd never do it, I don't want to get out, that's fine. And somebody else said, best job in the world, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to an opinion on something. But they were two very different ends. It was somebody who only just started doing the job. Um, I don't think the ink had dried on the license. And then it was somebody who was saying it who'd been driving probably a good, I don't know, 25, 30 years. So, didn't bug me, but I thought, mm, comment on something you don't fully understand yet. But then somebody who does understand, I think it's got a more, I would take their opinion more. But like you said, everyone's entitled to their opinions. Myself, I've only been driving, I know, a couple of years, or 15 years, something like that. I was actually earning more 12 years ago than what I do now. But then in the bigger picture of things, I'm doing less hours, and probably earning not far off about the same. So that's a bonus. majority of companies at the moment are looking for drivers, I wouldn't touch, I wouldn't I wouldn't advise anyone to go near them, because they're normally big, big companies who've got such a massive turnover of drivers, then alarm bells should be ringing. Uh, I think in, I've been here two and a half years, and we've had, we haven't really had anyone leave or go. We've had new drivers, they've been here a couple of weeks. The job is not for them, they've gone somewhere else. That's fine. But we haven't lost no long-term drivers here. Pretty much when I started, all the same drivers are there. Um, bar one, there's an extra driver and he's been here a good while now as well. But the bigger the company, I have no doubt the worse you will get treated. That's my opinion. I'm trying to word this without probably trying to offend too many people at the same time because I could offend a lot of people. I still got the attitude of there's your job, get on with it, okay? Um, I will not contact my office um, for unless I am in dire straits, got to. Just get the job done. Don't, oh, I can't do this, I can't. Get on with it. And then there's a, another side of drivers at the moment are ah, just going, okay, you know, point and aim. Oh, I, I can't find the place. And you're phoning up your office because you can't find it. Well, that's not your office's problem. That's yours. That's what you're paid to do, find these places. You know, double check addresses, things like that. So, these companies at the moment are so desperate for drivers. They don't care. Um, well, the majority don't care. If the ink's still wet on your license, they, they'll put you in the seat and go, which I think is extremely bad. Because these people have got very little experience, uh, probably got a, not a very good knowledge of the UK, and still got a lot to learn. So, chucking people into the deep end like that, I think, is bad. I learned to drive, or learned most of what I know from the fact that um, the day I was born, I come out with a rope and a sheep in my hand. Simple as my, I spent every moment I could with my father, always at the yard, uh, chained in load, sheep and trailers, loved it. Best, best days in the world they were. So I was lucky to learn off a massive old school of drivers. But because of health and safety now, you are not allowed to, you know, bring your boy or your daughter or whatever to work, health and safety, this could happen, that could happen. So these people who are coming into this job are not learning, um, not learning the basics of things, which is a shame. It's a real shame. It's the same as, you know, people who drive machines or plant, you know. Saturday, Saturday morning, come on, I'm into work, you know, grab your sprog, chuck them in the jump seat in the machine or whatever. And that's how you learn it, best way of learning, I think. But that's not happening. So the standard of driving at the moment is just. And then there's new drivers coming in. Um, kind of giving it a, yeah, I can do 
that, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And when it comes down to it, and they go to dig into their bag of talent, there's nothing there. They can't do the job. Hence why, you know, you, the volume of bridge strikes these days, uh, it's, it's just phenomenal. Would I advise anyone to get into the job? Yes. Um, would I? What would I advise people to do? Um, try and find a small company. A company that can, is willing to spend a bit of time on it. Teach you the, the the job. Not you know a um, massive company that just you know all they want you to do is point it forward and go. Believe it or not, uh, I, I had a phone call many years ago uh, asking me could I explain to somebody how to strap a particular load. Well, I said I can't tell somebody over the phone. Yeah, 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 just, just tell them over the phone. No, I, I won't. Uh, one, it's quite hard to explain. And two, you need somebody there to actually show up. And more to the point, why would you take on somebody that can't do the job? Desperate for drivers. Very simple. So, yeah, um, is the tea cold yet? I expect it is, isn't it? Because this is waffling on. So, there's, um, yeah, go for a smaller company. The smaller the companies tend to, I think, uh, will nurture you a bit more. So, get in with them. Stay away from the bigger companies. Nothing wrong with the bigger companies, um, but I personally wouldn't. If you work for a smaller company, uh, to be fair, you're a bit more appreciated as well. They do seem to uh, you know, appreciate you more. Anyway, uh, and sons, you're a lovely fleet to have. Uh, yeah, so when you do, if you go for a smaller company, just watch what, every, what, what they're doing, any of them, no matter what the job is, if, if you're doing uh, anything, watch the older drivers, keep an eye out, don't be afraid to ask questions, there's no such thing as a stupid question, I'd rather a driver come up to me and ask me the stupidest question in the world, but if it means it stops that person making a big mistake, or a small mistake, then don't matter does it it just it does not matter so if somebody comes up here with a what you might think is a uh, a daft question yeah you think it's a daft question that's because you know the answer they don't so correct them put them right there's no harm in it there's no harm oh, oh, oh. there's no harm in a cheese cob by that <laughs> and then obviously work your way up I went for a job, how long have I been driving? For a 12 month. Uh, I went for a job, told me no, why not? Two years experience. No problem, that's fine. It's easier for companies to have people with experience because then they haven't got to spend the time with them. They haven't got to put effort into it. They're happy to have somebody go, oh, you can do that, yeah. Off you go, son, away you go. It takes the headache out. But even then, even today, I probably wouldn't give a new driver a, a job. Not straight away. I want them in the yard. I want them to understand from the bottom all the way up. So therefore, if they've got a good understanding from the bottom to the top, they know how, how everyone else's jobs work. It makes things so much easier for everyone. I wouldn't say to a new driver, you know what I mean? Go and pick up an uh, uh, 18, 18 meter cage, two off down the road with that. Yeah, you know, that'd just be silly. Same as uh, with steel and everything else. But if you start in a company, I don't know, just start on the smaller wagons, uh, slowly move your way up. I just think it's a better way of doing it. I wouldn't say to somebody, Go pick a load up, it's got to be sheeted because they've never done it. Because if you've never done it before, never been shown how to do it before, 
you can end up in a mess. You, it's little tricks of how you fold the sheet, why you fold it that way, so that it makes it easier to carry it or easier to put it up onto a load, little things like that. So teach them from the bottom, put them up the top. But it's not happening. It's just not happening and therefore people are getting disheartened and don't want to come into the industry no more. They, which I don't blame them. I do not blame them. And the CPC, which is about as much use as bulk paper. Wow. There is nothing at the moment to encourage people into this job. Nothing. If you're doing this job, you will do 65 to 70 hours Monday to Friday. Easy. Without battering an eyelid. Um, you'll have massive um, unsocial working hours. As for life at home, forget it. Won't happen. Oh, shut up, I know. You can pretty much kiss your home life goodbye. Not all companies like that, I mind, but a lot of the bigger the company, they want you on the road 24 7. Some wages are good, some are not. There is a colossal difference in wages from like in South Wales to probably London to, to Manchester. Wages are massively different. If I was doing this job uh, for argument's sake down around the Dartford area, uh, oh, I'd easy double my money easy all day long. I'd be earning double what I am now. It's nice and easy here. I'm left alone. Boss don't bother me. Very rarely have a phone call off the office. Much more important. Sometimes less is more. Like this is really waffling on now so I'm going to get off here. Chepstow? Let's go Chepstow. Oh well, it's about two inches too short, so when I was ratcheting, it wasn't catching in the clip. Uh, so, we're all that. That's all we've done. Sit nicely on there. Eh? Put two straps together though. So, like I said, I haven't got long straps. I could do with a couple of long straps, but I don't use them enough, so. Make do, make do. Wait for one more now, which is. Over there. Yeah, I'll look at this for a few. I don't waking up every day, pull the curtains and you see that. I'll fault that, can I? We looted our and well an hour and I probably nearly two hours in fact. But never mind, it is what it is. God, it's dusty though. A bit tight to get a new new. It's so dusty, I'm not opening my window. <laughs> I refuse. It's um, oh, oh, nearly. Nearly caught an airline. Oh, nearly lost an airline then. Yeah, the old uh, 
old boss's son just loaded me then he's willing to learn so get him on me and that's the way to do it you're just saying you reckon the crops are well in front of themselves are you supposed to be about knee high you reckon now oh, a bit higher than that Right, let's uh, make a phone call. Break the bad news to the uh, to one of the boss men. <laughs> let's see how we go. I love about my job. Nothing's ever easy. It's tighter than a duck's fart. That is, isn't it? Oops, that was a big duck. Guess what? I thought that one was coming off first. That one is. Poo. Oh well, get it off as well, isn't it? <sighs> now I got the privilege of sticking all that back up there. God, I love my job, I. Brilliant, isn't it? It is a bit tight uh, reversing in here, especially since it's on the blind side. But the car park should be empty now. Make your mind up left or right. When I came here, that was all full of cars, completely solid. Solid with cars when they come in, yeah? All the buses were in, yeah? So I'll tap myself on the back and say, oh, well done, Russ, you've got it in, yeah? With two shunts. Two! Right, let's go over and uh, whip this last one off. Still got loads to do. It's quarter past three, for God's sake.
on. Two on the front. Two on the front. Two on the back. And two on the front. Bish bash bosh. Let's roll. It's about five o'clock now. Still got another three machines to pick up. Yeah, so we'll be having snuggles when he goes home tonight. Somebody might not be very happy. Somebody might be very annoyed. God, it is incredibly stuffy and warm. It's unreal. He's telling me it's 22 degrees outside. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it's about uh, oh, 10 to 5, sorry. Never mind. So anything with um, with a lot of the plant, um, two busiest days for me are normally uh, Monday and Friday. So obviously Monday is a lot of plant goes out. Friday is a lot of plant coming back in because obviously the higher and this and that. Yeah, I think it'll be it'll probably be about eight o'clock tonight before I finish now. Got held up a bit earlier as well, picking the picking the cabins up. I said containers; they are cabins, really. Which put us about two hours behind. And, uh, well, that's what it is, isn't it? It's just it's just the job. Think of the moolah, baby. Think of the moolah on my overtime. <laughs> Think of all the extra goodies I can buy. None because she loved it. <laughs> How dare you work so late? <laughs> hey, up, fat boy. Uh, uh. Yeah, with um, what's this? Uh, it's a bow mag roller, I think this is, if I remember rightly. About 14, 15 ton. They're easier to load than the, the other rollers, the little rollers. I don't like loading them, they just slide, terribly slide. I think as a few of you will know how bad they are the load. This is only going down the road. Um, and then I got a, two more to pick up. One's been cancelled until Monday. So that's good. Yeah, so we've got two more. Um, that was six. Yeah, it'll be about eight o'clock tonight now. I didn't start at six. It started at five o'clock the other morning. <laughs> Oof. No, no, God forbid. Right. right, we'll um go in. Ah, um I wanted to take a mic out of somebody, but I couldn't. There was too many people here just now. So John, you were lucky. I was about to um, rip him apart on camera. Too many people there. Actually, there's a little angry man there at the time, <laughs> and uh, uh, don't think it'd be a good idea because he was a very angry little man. <laughs> oh, you ought to be there to understand that one. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Love it when you gotta wait for security. Ah. I can't do a lot about this canoe. I'm going to dump this off and I'm going to pick up another two and it's quarter past six. Yay! I'm definitely having no special cuddles tonight. <laughs> oh, my dinner will be in the dog. Oh, apologies for the wind. Russ's hot tip of the day. When you take your chains off, don't slide them into the middle because that's what I normally do because uh, it's a big, 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 big roller. And when you reverse back, it's got a tendency to put um, big holes on the trailer bed. So I've been told, allegedly. <laughs> Close the window. Turn the key. Easy things to drive. 
Start! She's alive. Pardon me. That is all it is. Don't press none of them, because one of them makes that go like that. Revs up, forward, backwards. Steering wheel. Self explanatory. On away she goes. Nice and steady wins the race. Strange feeling having no pedals. It's a horrible feeling actually. Come on, down you go. It's a very um repeating for. Boosh, down she goes. Fairground to be open yet, but it is. A bit of normality, like, isn't it? A bit of a. Uh, well, in the old uh, day trippers. It's a bit windy though. The last time I come down here, it was absolutely dead. Um, virtually no one. We'll be coming this way and have a bit of a mooch. Oh, Chippy's busy then. <laughs> That's a queue for a chip shop. <laughs> oh, wow. Fair play. If you've got to be a garden, you'll make a fortune. I think this was my bestest idea coming this way for a nosy. Well, mate, you absolutely balls that up. Oh, well done. You park like an absolute prat. And that one's not going to indicate. Oh, 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 he's going straight on. But all right, we're going straight on. These people out and about again before we get shut down for the second time. Oh, oh. oh quads! I want one. I'd love a quad. I want my bike license. I don't want nothing stupid, I just want something to uh, put around on. Something that's so loud that they can hear me coming from the moon. Sat here in my old uh, big Harley just cruising along. <laughs> uh, I break it, but I don't really know why. Oh, okay, okay then. I do love the ones that hesitate. Hello. 
up in, I'm going to have no trouble down here now. Straight in and straight out. I'm hoping. But something's telling me that's not going to happen. Come on Nelly, giddy up, let's go. Rackliest fridge. Just good old fashioned uh, Swedish quality. some strange looks, 10 to 7 at night, <laughs> coming down here in the lorry, <laughs> picking up plant. <laughs> God, this video could be really long, this one. It's all turning to poop. Can't pick that one up, because there's a fob on it with an immobiliser. And can't get into that one. Even though I've got keys for it. It's seven o'clock. Oh well. There's somebody flying a Mavic DJI uh, Pro 2. Oh my god, it's awesome. The way he's gone though. Yeah, so uh, we're having a really good night. Seven o'clock at night, in Porth Call, having a large. Oh, hang on. I can hear it. Where is he? I can hear it, but I can't see it. Bugging me now. Anyway, well, we'll leave this here, I think. And we'll last speak to another time. Ooh.